previously in the last video. Can't you just tell me what the hell I did? What the fuck does it look like? You summoned a demon. <laughs> oh! Oh! For uh, all you jump scared me. Tell me why ain't nothing but a heart. <laughs> yes, Lucas. One day I will thaw your heart. I shall bring life to your cold dead soul. And now back to the present. Yo, what is up everybody? Zan's Epic Kid here, back again with some more of Spellbound. Last where we left off, we saw Sweden, got to hang out with him some more as he started building a chair that Denmark broke for some weird reason. Uh, we got to interact with Lucas some more, and he might actually be starting to warm up to us after him being pissed about, you know, Venti Chai Latte summoning a demon. So, let's continue the adventures of Venti Chai Latte. I rise the next morning far more well rested and former. Although there is still a leaden exhaustion to my limbs, that I can't shake and a pressure in my test that won't lift. That demon really did a number on me. Oh yeah, uh, by the time I'm recording this, uh, Thanksgiving happened recently. It was nice. Um, and I wish all of you happy holidays and good luck on whatever you have to do in this season. <laughs> Whether it be finals or, you know, just getting ready for the holidays. I frown, but deem there's nothing to be done about it and head to the kitchen instead. The sky is still slightly dark, with the first fingers of sunlight poking in through the window. One of them rests on Berwald, making his golden hair glow softly. Yes, I have the nice golden hair. It is very soft. <laughs> it's barely 8 in the morning. Does he sleep at all? He glances at me from his pot, his spot. Leaning against the kitchen counter. Morning. Good morning! Did you stay up the entire night? Bruh. Want coffee? Hmm. If I accept the coffee, he might think that it's a sign that I want to hang out with him only. But if I rejected coffee, then I'm going to trigger the worst ending in the game. I'm kidding. <laughs> Is that how these visual novels work? I love coffee. Berwald doesn't ask me how I take my coffee. Instead, quickly turning to the coffee machine and turning it on. I like mine with two teaspoons of sugar, tablespoons of sugar, and cream. When I take my first sip, I notice that he added just enough sugar. The way I like it. He must have remembered how I prepared it yesterday morning. That's kind of cute. You know, when you, Lucas was yelling at me. Thank you for the coffee. It's perfect. Mm hmm As we start eating. I notice that Berwald seems to be watching me discreetly, even as he finishes his food and carries his dishes to the sink to wash them. His back isn't fully turned. I hope he doesn't suspect I did something bad. Maybe he thinks I'm crazy for what happened last night. Ah! Oh, oh god, it's a fucking jump scare. Matthias. I keep getting jump scared by these people. Before I can worry more, Matthias and Lucas enter the kitchen. Matthias bounds in first, grinning at me with a smile brighter than the sun that's yet to fully rise. Good morning, venti chai latte. Good morning. When Lucas follows, he only gives me a curt nod, mm. but takes a seat next to me anyways. I try not to notice how he shifts his chair away. Just my hair. Well, at least he's not glaring at me. We were making so much progress last night. Yeah, I'm in for the long slow burn with him. Platonically, I mean. Next to walk in are Emil and Tino. Emil approaches me first, pulling something out of his pocket. Hey, here's your phone. It fell out of your pocket when we first found you. We forgot to give it to you earlier. Ah. Oh, thanks! I take my phone from him and set it down in front of me on the table. Probably not the best decision, since I might forget it again, but oh well. Hey! Can I give you my number? Huh? You heard me! My method is saving whenever there's a choice. Uh, normally I would not accept straight away. But then again, what if the demon comes again? Okay. I guess I won't be leaving the house, so I don't... Matthias rolls his eyes good-naturedly and holds his hand out expectantly. I turn my phone on and hand it to him, watching as he punches in his number. Hey, how about Venti try lot to get someone else's phone number too? With how big the house is, it'd be easier to communicate that way. We never know where everyone else is anyways. Ah, oh, good idea. 
Good idea! Whose number do you want? Venti Trilotic. Can't I just pick, get all your numbers? If turn it into a group chat? Like Mystic Messenger style? I don't know. Oh my god. This is gonna determine the freaking fate of the universe. Right here. <laughs> Let's see. Can I phone a friend? <laughs> um. You know, <laughs> since I'm technically going for these two first. It takes Tino a couple of tries to get his phone number right, but once he does, he returns my phone with a grin. Here you go! <laughs> Thank you! You can call me anytime. I keep my ringtone on all the time, so I'll always get to you! Okay, I imagine Finland's ri Tino's ringtone would be something that's either like a super sweet and fluffy Christmas theme song. Or like, just straight up death metal. <laughs> because that's just the vibes he has. Hey! We should all give Venti Chai Latte our phone numbers! It'll be easier to chat that way! Alright. I sense a group chat coming. I have a feeling this won't end well. I know, I mean I watched Unfriended. Despite Emil's concerns, soon I get everyone's phone number. Well, if something bad happens, now I know I'll be able to tell them. Tino stands up and goes to the cupboards, opening one of the doors and looking through the mugs. Hey, has anyone seen my coffee mug? Which one? The one I usually use, with the Moomins. Ah. Okay. Actually, <laughs> I haven't really watched the Moomins that much. But I only see like these compilations of out of context clips, and some of them are so hilarious and out there. Moom and Papa is a highly educated gentleman. But I am a witch with three diplomas. But the style is cute. Matias stands up, too, and sifts through the dirty dishes in the sink. He comes up empty-handed. Oh my god, the demon stole the Moomin cup! No! Huh. Maybe it's in the dishwasher? It isn't. Maybe you left it in your room or something. I don't remember taking it out of the kitchen. Maybe on the porch or something. I'll look for it later today. Everyone sits back down and continues having breakfast. I take a sip of my coffee, glancing at Tino. Hopefully we can find his mug soon. Breakfast comes and goes, and soon everyone files out of the room to tend to their various tasks. You find yourself, once again, struggling to make a decision. What should I do today? I mean, I ask myself that question every day when I have free time. I'm like, dang, what do I do? Visit the garden, raid the pantry, wander around, poke around the library, head out the back porch. Um, so... From my guesses, I wonder who gardens. Maybe Tino. Uh, pantry. Maybe Emil. I don't know. Uh, wander around. Maybe Matthias. Lucas. Berwald. <laughs> That's my first guess. Anyways, maybe Berwald is actually here. <laughs> I want to immerse myself in nature. So I want to visit the garden. I haven't done gone outside since getting here. I should go check out the garden. When I step outside, taking a deep breath of the fresh air, I find Lucas tending to the flowers. Okay, I was wrong. Pell hands caked with dirt. He pulls up weeds and dead stalks from the flower beds. Through the multicolored flower beds, there's a straight line of wilted plants cutting through. Too neat to be coincidence. It looks like something walked through it and caused the plants to wither in its wake. <gasps> Maybe it's from some weird slugs or something? Do you know what happened here? Lucas glances at me, not particularly surprised or angry at my presence, and shakes his head. I look at the patch of flowers he's tending to. They seem to be hyacinths, tall stalks of purple flowers. Despite the dusting of snow blanketing the garden, the flowers are bright and untouched. He must have covered them during the snowfall. Are all these plants yours? Yes. I grew them all myself. They're beautiful! Uh, or, 
Just silence. You're beautiful. Thank you. He doesn't seem as annoyed or mad as he was the past few days. Just a bit far off. In fact, it looks like he's daydreaming. Violet eyes, not entirely there. Well, that's true. He does... He's the daydreamy type. Maybe Tino's right. And he's just stressed. Are these your favorite flowers? Hmm? No. I don't think so. I don't really have a favorite. I like those heathers over there. Really? I think they're quite nice too. I bend down to look at one of the dead plants. I pull one up from the ground. The brown, shriveled leaves disintegrate in my fingers. Yikes, that can't be good. Lucas notices the way the leaves crumble with my touch too, and furrows my brow. I'm cursed! I'm gonna make every plant die! Ugh. I better figure out what's doing this to them soon. You need any help? He doesn't say yes, but he doesn't say no either. Just shrugging, so I beeline to another flower bed and get to work pulling out the dead plants. They continue to fall apart when I touch them, but I do my best to ignore that. I brush my hands on my jeans every now and then to get rid of the plant remains and bits of soil, and soon all the dead plants in the flower bed are pulled up and move on to the next one. It's a bit awkward, working in complete silence, but Lucas doesn't seem to want to start a conversation anyways. True. I toss all the dead plant matter into a small pile, which only grows in size with every flower bed I work on. What could have done this? I don't know, the thing you summoned? Red eyes flash. Shit! Are you alright? I turn to look at him. He's frowning slightly, head tilted in a way that makes his hair fall into his eyes. I take a deep breath. I must have winced or something. I'm fine, it's nothing. He definitely doesn't look like he believes me, but he doesn't push me. Trying to keep my hands from shaking, I grab the next withered stalk. Why don't we take a break? Hmm? Okay, <laughs> nice music <laughs> comes once more. It's like, oh no, ominous red eyes. Welp, time to keep gardening. Nothing is wrong, or could ever go wrong. <laughs> Hmm? Oh, okay. We dust our hands clean the best we can, and Lucas walks towards one of the trees lining the garden. Oh, I never knew he grew fruit trees too. Lucas plucks a crimson apple from one of the branches and offers it to me. I wait until he's picked one for himself before biting into it, surprised at how sweet and crisp it is. I made apple cider flows for my family today. They liked it. I'm glad you liked them. <gasps> Am I that easy to read? Yes, Venti Chai Latte, you're an open book. Tino uses them for pie sometimes. We finish the apples off in a comfortable silence, better than the one we worked in at least, then throw the cores into the compost bin. Lucas stops me before I can throw the dead plant matter in though. Could have been the sort of poison that killed them. And that would destroy the rest of the compost. I'll just throw it in the trash can. We clean up the scraps and wash our hands. Thanks. It's nice to have a bit of help sometimes. Anytime! Well, we got to help Lucas. So, let's see. We could either raid the pantry, wander around, poke around the library, or head out to the back porch. Um, I mean, personally, my instincts, I would go to the library. Because I'd be an introvert like that. But we're gonna... My instincts tell me to go to the back porch. <gasps> it's beautiful! Wait, how is there a garden in the snow? Whatever. <laughs> Deciding some fresh air would be nice. I head outside, the wooden floorboards of the porch creaking under my feet. It's cold, but the breeze is mild. Not too bad of a day. But yeah, it was established earlier that it was snowing, so shouldn't be too weirded out. It seems I'm not the only one who thinks so. As I look to my left, I see Tino sitting at a small, wonderfully crafted wooden table, probably Berwald's. He's wrapped in a blanket and sipping on a cup of coffee, eyes trained on a little white dog playing in the snow. Ah, Hanatamago. Since when was there a dog in this house? I have half a mind to run out there and pet the dog, taking a step towards the stairs of the veranda. But the planks beneath me creak, and Tino snapped out of the moment locks eyes with me. He smiles, ever cheerful, 
And I notice he has brought the entire pot of coffee outside with spare mugs. Oh, hello, venti chai latte. Care to have a cup of coffee? No, napkin. <laughs> yes, please. Tino pours me a cup of coffee as I pull out a chair beside him, and I thank him as he gently transfers it, it to my hands. Something about the coffee in this house is just better. I've never had a cup taste so good. They're magical, that's why they have the same house. The atmosphere is comfortable as the two of us watch the dog run erratically through the yard, and any leftover tension from the days prior leaves my body. Yeah, I'm just... I guess I just have no bookstore job. Or, you know, no lease for my apartment. I'm just staying with these guys now because of the freaking summoning thing. <laughs> I look at Tino out of the corner of my eyes to see him already doing the same. So, how do you like it here? It's nice. <laughs> That's lovely to hear. The smile is infectious. You find yourself wondering how on earth it it's possible to be that happy. I know Lucas hasn't exactly been the most welcoming as of late. But he really doesn't mean anything by it. Sometimes he's that short with us. We've known him for thousands of years. Wait a second, I thought this was a human AU. There are actually nations in this? Hold up. Okay. <laughs> thousands of years? I'm sure Matthias has been nothing but positive, though. If you ever need help and can't find me, go ahead and ask him. He has plenty of energy to spare. Or, or ask for Wald. I know he looks scary, but he doesn't bite. He's actually very considerate once he gets you know, to know him. Hey, I always saw him as nice, okay, Tino? No, I'm kidding. Tino continues to ramble on about the occupants of his house, reiterating every once in a while that I'm more than welcome to stay here as long as I'd like, and that they were here to help. I get the sense that he doesn't get any company often. I'm glad I could provide some for him. Or maybe they're actual magical people, and they're like cryptids living in the woods. <laughs> There's a lull in conversation as Tino finishes his cup and places it on the table, taking the coffee pot in his hands to pour himself another. Just how much coffee does this man drink in a day? I'm myself of only a little less than halfway done with mine. Cup steaming again. Tino leans back in his seat. So, any questions about anything or anyone? Um, what about you, Tino? <laughs> uh, what about Matthias, Lucas, and Mio Berval? What about Matthias? Ah, Matthias! He's really calmed down for the better over this last couple centuries. Okay, so you're really just casually talking that you're actually a nation dude. He used to be so bossy. He's still really stubborn, but he's a lot more considerate to others these days. Well, they're not really secretive about it in canon, to be honest. But yeah, I think humans who... Spend a prolonged amount of time with them can like get their sort of sense of time or memory mixed up, so they can't really stick by them for long and yeah. Tino pauses to take a big sip of his drink. He's definitely got the most energy out of all of us. They all work hard, but Matthias really throws everything he has into what he wants to do. He makes up for what he lacks in common sense, but spirit. <laughs> and a lesser known fun fact. He's also got killer reflexes, true. Try throwing an apple or something at him next time you see him. Even from the side, he'll catch it super quick. Yeah, he managed to catch, what, Belarus's hanger during the Halloween event. Tino continues to chat about Matthias, throwing in a story or two at Matthias's expense, and I listen with a smile. By the time he's done, I finally finished my cup, and Tino offers to take it inside for me. No, I should be heading in anyways. I'll bring it myself. Thank you for the chat, Tino. Of course. I'll be staying out here a little longer, so if you need me, you know where to find me. Waving goodbye to him, I head inside. Oh, I got three more things to do. Just got, um, just wandering around. I decide to wander around for a bit, loitering aimlessly inside before stepping out onto the porch to gaze upon the horizon. A bluebird. Okay, I'm like, that does not sound like a bluebird, but I see heavy machinery. A bluebird flits amongst the flower beds below, and I watch it play, taking in the sounds around me. Birds chirping, the rustling of the breeze in the grass, and heavy machinery. Heavy machinery? I look around, 
Nothing nearby seems to explain the noise. And I find myself playing a game of hot and cold as I spin around, trying to find which direction it's coming from. Oh my god, Matthias did it. He built a fucking IKEA robot. Nah, I'm kidding. I walk in circles for the first few minutes, but gradually the sound gets louder and louder until I stumble across a little shed with a massive sawmill outside it. I barely notice the imposing figure of Braval because of the sheer size of the thing, which he maneuvers with admirable ease. He doesn't seem to notice me as I lean against the wooden pillar and observe as he strips a spruce tree of its branches, presumably to refine the tree into planks. Despite the weight of the tree's parts, he lifts them effortlessly. He frowns as one of them mere disintegrates in his hands, leaving a burnt black res- Oh. Uh oh, that can't be good. That's also happening with the plants. Although I don't know much about woodworking, that doesn't seem natural at all. Especially since the tree looks like it's been felled fresh. Hmm. So it seems that whatever curse has happened is affecting the plant life. I wonder if it's gonna end up, I don't know, affecting the people too? That's not gonna be good. <laughs> Revolve is almost through a whole tree by the time he acknowledges my presence. Turning halfway and making direct eye contact, I immediately look away, flustered at having been caught. But there is no animosity behind his eyes, and I know he didn't mind the audience. You can sit on that log over there if you'd like. Hmm. Sit down. Thanks! I accept his offer and plop down on the log. Revald quietly returns to his work. A question materializes in my mind. And as I open my mouth to ask, he turns on the sawmill to finish the last of the spruce tea. I deadpan as the air fills with the violent sounds of power tools, but wait patiently until he's done. A full ten minutes pass before he powers his machine down, and you shoot your sh- Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like it was some parts weren't proofread thoroughly, but, you know. So, you work here? This is your thing? Revolt seems mildly, mildly surprised that you're actually talking to him. But he seems more happy to answer your questions as he nods. Mm. I take furniture commissions. It's a side job. What do you do for the most part, then? Being a nation. <laughs> yeah, it's complicated. Yep. That's all he's gonna tell me? I knew it. They're cryptids! <laughs> I don't really understand what that means. But I'm not one to pry, so I keep my mouth shut. There are other things I can talk to him about anyways. Must be hard work at times. Hmm, I like it though. Sometimes Matthias joins. Matthias helps you? How? Or tell me more. Matthias helps you? How? Revald exhales ha loudly through his nose and I quirk an eyebrow. One of the first displays of emotion from the man. You know, Matthias just has, has that effect on people. Sometimes he helps. He has too much fun with his axe. <laughs> his axe? Yes. Had it since the 8th century. Pain in my ass. <laughs> Sweden. Pain in my ass. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm screenshotting that line. Since the 8th century? This family's house did seem old. So strange artifacts were given, but 1300 years old? Oh my god, venti chai lattes not connecting the dots. I watch him work for a little longer, before I become restless to explore more of the house. I fidget with my hands for a little while, before I finally get up, brushing off my pants and waving goodbye to my new friend. I'll leave you to it then. Have fun! Revolt simply hums in response, obviously not one of many words, as I gaze upon the path, debating on which direction to walk next. Ah, we didn't get to see Emil or Matthias. Oh well. I mean, yeah. After a busy day exploring, I'm eager to get back to my room, but I hesitate as I pass by Lucas's study on the way there. The door is swung wide, soft classical music wafting from the interior, and as I peek inside, I can see Lucas surrounded by stacks and stacks of books, some lying open, some lying upside down. He must be doing good research. The spare chair is still empty, exactly where I left it, and I tamp down the urge to sit and ask him what he's doing. Best not to bother him, I think. 
Besides, I'm beginning to get overwhelmed by just how huge everything is in this house. It's too big. The empty spaces feel intimidating. Closing the door to my room, I pull the covers aside and snuggle into bed. I toss and turn for a few minutes, ruminating on the day's events before I give up on sleeping just yet. I pull my phone out, squinting at the brightness of the screen and pull up my contact list. The five new names and numbers sit in a neat little column and my thumb hovers over them. Maybe I should check text someone just to make sure they've entered properly. Hmm. Text Emilio, Brevald, Lucas, Tino, Matias. Hmm. I haven't fully decided who to lock on to for a route. I'm trying to wreck more points for Tino or Matias first. So, hmm. Yeah, text Matias. I haven't seen him all day. Matias answers almost instantly, and I'm a little taken aback by the amount of punctuation marks he uses. Hey, did you need something? Lay it on me. Text me whenever you need to. Lips quirking to smile, I hastily type out a response. Hi, I was just trying to see if this phone works after so long outside. And it does. I'm glad. Oh, awesome. If you need anything else, feel free to text me. Will do. Good night, Matias. Happy face. Good night, venti chai latte. I'll see you tomorrow. Very happy face. With that out of the way, I click my phone off and shove it under my pillowcase, ready for a good night's sleep. Okay. So yeah, that was another day in the lives with the Nordics. So we got to learn a lot more about the rest of the guys. And we're probably starting to sort of be branching out in the routes. And yeah, it seems that um, these mysterious dudes, they actually are nation kind. I thought this was just a human alternate universe, but... Yeah, it seems there are actually nations here that happen to be living under the same roof for whatever reason. And now there's this weird curse thingy that's killing all the plants. And hopefully we'll get to the bottom of it. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye!